Hiya. Uh, so we're going to walk through uh, some of the functions of my script um, that I created with uh, some input from Waylon Winschlag on YouTube. And uh, we see it running right now. Uh, one controlling this um, hydroponic device, just a hydroponic tray with a with a with an input with an output, and a hydroponic um, station. First, let's um, harvest these. Tomatoes seem to be very inefficient uh, to grow. Is this seed done? This seed's not done, but we won't care. Let's just let's just pick everything. So we can we can set this thing back down. There we go. And we'll need you. Okay. So right now, uh, this hydroponics um, is glitching for some reason. Give me a second. I had a one where there were supposed to be a zero. So uh, this hydroponics bay right here, or this hydroponics device, is ready to be planted. And we see this with um, that there are negative numbers on the um, on the list here. So what what this means is negative one means it's a grow status of one, um, which means it's empty, and that it is in mode one. And this just this is just uh, coincidentally uh, means that it's that it's on. Um, it's actually uh, eleven eleven is 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 not a valid uh, error code in this um, in in this uh, in this script. It just happens to be eleven eleven because of how um, how the error codes generate. Um, and then negative negative one hundred just means it's just the growth factor. It it doesn't matter. When we once we plant it, we get a um, an efficiency up here on this uh, this large LED. One hundred and four percent point whatever. Uh, the point whatever is important because that will change uh, more slowly. Like the the one hundred four will barely change throughout the growth cycle, but the um, uh, the, the decimals will change a lot, and that gives you some indication that it's working. This is not actually important. It's just good for like uh, like debug data to tell you what's going on, how fast the plant's going to grow, um, if it's too cold, or if there's something if there's something wrong. This will tell you. This will change drastically. Now the error code that it's generating is uh, uh, one one point two, so one hundred means that growth is proceeding. Um, 10 means that it's in the first growth stage. And 2 means uh, that the light is off and it's counting down to turn the light back on again. Um, and the point 0.1 is just a remnant of what the actual code is. So it's uh, right now it's 94 ticks till the light gets turned on. And you can see that by also looking at the small uh, display light. And we'll wait the, the few seconds, and then we'll see it turn on. Loop! The light has turned on. Um, because of the mode, if we if we look on the, uh, the script here, we have a Grow Light Master is set to 1. That means is that it's going to change all of the lights that are the same as this light on. So if you have different types of light, or if you have... Um, a hydroponics bay and um, uh, a grow light and you have another light it's not going to turn them all on it's just going to turn all the lights that are grow lights that are on the same network the same um, the same wire and when it meets uh, like a power controller or a transformer or 
something that interrupts um, the contiguous network, it'll shut off. Or it won't shut off. It just won't control those lights because it'll be on the other side of a bridge. Um, so all of these lights will be controlled. And we're going to go in here. And we're going to set this back to zero just to show that, it's, that it won't... Um, that it won't control those now. Uh, we're also in mode uh, 113. Again, one means growth is occurring. Uh, growth stage one and three means uh, lights are on and it's not doing anything else. It's just waiting for the plant to do something different. So uh, 1113 is basically the, the best or one some number three is is the best mode you can be in because that means it's getting light and it's growing and everything's fine if we look over here at the hydroponics bay just or the hydroponics station just because it's a hydroponics station doesn't mean it works any different it is it's actually only looking at one slot slot zero which is uh, this one and treating the whole thing the same way um, when it senses that growth will is um, increasing or decreasing, it will um, apply light or uh, extinguish the light. It'll turn all the light on and off. And we see that the error code here is 100 for it is growing. 400 or 40 for it's in growth cycle four. That's what happens to um, tomato plants when they have grown up to fruiting and seeding and you've taken the seed and you've taken the fruit it resets to four and then two just means it's in darkness and it's counting down and it will turn on in 80 ticks so 40 seconds let's wait the 40 seconds incidentally the faster these numbers move uh, the more stressed out the plant is so if these if these numbers are moving very fast it means it's not liking being in the dark right now. Not enough to like really bother it, um, but once we see the light come back on, we will see these numbers also come back up. Now you might also see a drop to this number. That just means that the on-off time cycle is not optimized, but you only lose one or two or three or four or five uh, percentage points. See, it's come back on, and now growth is increasing. And uh, it's now in uh, mode 3, which means it's waiting for the plant to do something. They're both on mode 3, the plants, it's waiting for the plant to do something. Now we will look at the settings that are on here. So, um, device 0 is your hydroponics device. So in this case, it's the hydroponics station, and over here, it is the um, hydroponics device. Back over here, we also need to control the light, so that's uh, device one. And that is the hydroponics station, because the hydroponics station has a light um, uh, incorporated into it, built into it. But over here, it is the grow light. And it's the grow light directly above it. And you want to make sure that it's this grow light that you're selecting. And the easiest way to do that is just to isolate uh, this network. So if you were to um, if you were to snip that wire and that wire, you can much more easily set which uh, device you want uh, your housing to connect to. Now, those are the only two devices need to be that are that are required. If the other devices are not set, um, the script will continue to run. The only thing that I can't account for because of the limitation of MIPS is if you set uh, a device of the wrong type in one of the slots. So the third slot here, device number three, so zero, one, or uh, sorry, device number two, so zero, one, two is the large LED. It's this guy right here. Now, that doesn't mean it's important. The error code is much more important than the growth rate. It just happens to be uh, the thing that I chose, the thing that I, that I built before other stuff. This was the thing that I was looking at first, so it happens to be device uh, uh, two on in the script. Then the next one is the gas sensor. So it can be a gas sensor anywhere in the room, 
uh, as long as it's on that network or it's mirrored onto the network, just some way to get access to it. And what that will do is it will it will be able to tell if the if there's pollutants or volatiles in the air, if it's too cold, or if the pressure is too low. It will it will be able to complain and tell you that there's something wrong. And then uh, device number eh, what device is this? This is device four is the uh, small display. Now you can use a large display or you can use a medium display. It doesn't matter. Uh, just as long as it's an LED display, it will display what the air code is. But you don't need any of that because if you look at the body, the body of the housing will give you your air codes. So the state in the air code right now is 113. It's the same as the as the lead. So we know that that is 113, that it's growing, it's continuing towards um, happiness. Now what kind of things does it monitor? Well, if we look over here, we can see that the first thing that it traps as an error message is um, these two things here. So this one is error code 501 and this is error code uh, 502. Now I sort of loosely based this on like HTML or HTTP or FTP errors and 500 is basically um, when errors begin. So 500 is, it's it, it, in HTML would be there is a problem. They don't match. It doesn't matter. It's just convenient. There is no 400. There is no 300 in this. It's just convenient to, to use this, use the same um, numerical structure. So if you get a code 501, it means that you haven't set a hydroponics device. I'm not going to show you that now because it's going to ruin the um, it's going to ruin the the script. The script is going to have to reset if you do that. If you if 502 is not set, um, that means that uh, um, uh, that means you don't have a grow light. This is not an error down here. You might be looking at that. Oh, that's an error. No, that's not an error. That just traps to see if there's any 500 codes. It'll change the lead. Uh, the display led to red, uh, uh, and then it'll just it'll display it in red. Uh, you don't need to know anymore. And if it's uh, under 150, uh, or if it's above 150, it'll it'll change it to to blue. Blue means you can harvest something, and then under normal circumstances, it would be uh, green down here. So that's anything up to um, 150. Kind of going all over the place with our uh, uh, with my description here. So now we go all the way down here to the error codes, and here we go. Here's our, our next error code. So we have 503. This is for pressure, um, and I believe this is water pressure. Yeah, I think this is water pressure. And yes, this is water pressure. So if the water pressure in the device is below five. Um, kilopascals, it will turn the, the lead red uh, and show you an error code uh, five, uh, 503. Same thing for temperature and then through the gas and this is this stays uh, this will be in the script no matter what uh, because it's part of the hydroponics device. Uh, this only works if you have the gas sensor in. So if you have any pollutants above one percent of the total air mixture you have an error code 505. I just guessed it's it's one percent. It might be less than that. Um, we're just guessing for now. Same thing for volatiles. If your carbon dioxide is too low, if you have less than one percent carbon dioxide, you'll get an error code 507. If the um, uh, if the pressure is too low, uh, below 25 uh, kilopascals, you get a you get a 508. And if your temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius. It right, right here is in um, Kelvin, uh, you'll get a 509. Um, all of those error codes are on the uh, description and the description page and uh, you can, they're, they're fairly easy to follow along. Uh, now you see that it's it's going up very slowly. That means it's um, it's on the verge of 
not liking the light. It's on the verge of, of uh, becoming damaged because of the light. So very soon the, the countdown timer will start. Over here we can see that it's, it's already been triggered and the light's been turned off. Now if I wanted to delete one of these uh, pieces, let's delete that one, the script still functions. It's fine. It is set in the in on the um, on the board here, but not being set here and not existing mean the same thing to the script. So it doesn't matter if you set it and then you delete it. It's not going to be um, a big deal. The script it will continue to run, and you will continue to have an error code. There is no error code for optional devices. If it's not there, if it's there, the script doesn't care. Um, normal conventions say that if you don't have these LEDs and it's not these LEDs um, and it's not processing that extra data, the script should run faster. But we're also talking about emulating like a really, really, really low power chip. So I'm not sure how much processor power they're using to um, uh, to simulate these scripts. So it, it really doesn't matter. But if I were to delete this uh, this grow light, uh, it's going to have a problem with that. It's going to it's going to bitch about it. We're not going to delete it now. Uh, we'll we'll wait a minute, and we'll see. Uh, because the master switch is off, uh, this master switch is zero. Uh, this light will remain on, um, which could be a problem for this little plant because it's like right next to each other. If they're right next to each other, you get a little bit of light, uh, that can cause some problems. If we look at these plants here, we'll see they're, they're all being controlled by the same light. They're in close, close proximity. The primary one that's being tested is uh, 117. So if we look at, at all the other glitches because of stationers and great coding by developers as normal. Okay. So we see here that this uh, growth efficiency is 122, this one is 124, this one is 122, and this one is 18. So you want to have your um, worst, um, the, your plant with the worst attributes in slot zero. Uh, just for reference, this is not slot zero, that is slot zero. I've manually changed the slot, which you can go in and do. There is no, um, there's no easy way to change that. Like there's nothing at the top of the, of the, of the code block to change which slot you want to look at. If you're comfortable changing yourself, go ahead and change it yourself. If you're not comfortable changing yourself, just leave it. It doesn't matter. Um, I was very unlucky when I planted these in that this was a very fast growing crop and it made all the other ones crash a little. So I could have either dug that up and put it a, put a better one down or dug them all up and put a better one down or just ignored it because eventually they would either wither away and die or they would catch up. But now that this one's in control, they've all catch, they've all caught up and, and that's fine. So you want to put your weakest one in slot zero. And this is still growing, which is kind of surprising. Potato plants grow very quickly. Um, I have something like four hours of footage and three hours of that is just those maturing. So it took three hours plus, I don't remember how long, uh, for those to mature. And in the meantime, I got 12 potatoes and seeds for each one of those potatoes. Um, and the, the tomatoes, I've gotten 15 tomatoes, but that is also with four plants. So tomatoes take a very long time. Um, uh, potatoes are much quicker. These are the only two plants that I have tested. But, uh, yeah, we'll just wait for this guy to uh, decide that he doesn't like being alive anymore. Cool. Now we have it in darkness. Shut that one off too right now. You see it didn't shut that one off. I just shut it off, but it was on a minute ago. 
and we can see that it's actually st actually going up a little. That's that's normal uh, for the uh, uh, the plant's efficiency to go up in darkness because it needs darkness. So at the beginning of its growth cycle, you will see uh, positive growth in in both cycles, in the dark cycle and in the night cycle. But towards the end, you'll see that it'll become um, less responsive to the dark and more stressed out in the light. Now with potatoes, that is pretty forgiving because potatoes, uh, once you pick them, they're done. So every time you plant uh, a new seed, it's a new plant and everything resets. With um, tomatoes, it's the same plant. So if you manage to get it to fruiting or you manage to get seeds and the efficiency is way down in 50 or 40 percent and you pick it, you're screwed. It's 50 percent and it'll have to recover and it'll take a long time to recover and it may not recover at all because if it maxes out any of its uh, stresses, like uh, if we look down here, we can see... Um, uh, light stress if that says 255 it's done you might as well just uh, just destroy the plant because it's not going to recover from that I have never been able to recover from a from a light stress of 255 now light stress is also dark stress so uh, you can get stressed out from darkness it doesn't show dark stress here but dark stress is a, uh, a hidden attribute and I know that it exists because I looked on the APIs. <laughs> so let's cause let's cause some havoc here. Let's cause a big error. So we'll well blow open the wind we'll blow open some windows. Jetpack on. And we'll bring the pressure way down. And we can already see that the plants are freaking out, and we're not even at uh, we're not even at a, a, a lower limit yet. There, uh, now we are in a lower limit, and it is completely crashed. For some reason, this one's not updating, but it's a it's a 508 error here, and I'm going to look why that's not updating. Uh, so it is updating. The body is updating, but it's just not updating the um, uh, that display, and it's probably not updating that display because um, um, when I deleted it and put it back in, it uh, it glitched the uh, the script out, and that's not fixing it. Sometimes when it's glitched out, you have to you have to destroy the housing or uninstall the housing, reinstall it, and like um, wipe the chip because uh, for it, they hold variables in them. So when you reset it, you're not actually resetting your variables. Even though you redeclare them at the top of your, your, your block, they remain, which is, which is not how that's supposed to work. Once you turn the power off, you're supposed to lose all memory. But let me just track down this error for a sec here. And the reason that it wasn't setting properly is because I have I had accidentally set um, this um, small LED to that small LED instead of this small LED, which is why when you want to set something, remove the remove your, your the wire that connects it to the rest of the stuff, and then you won't see uh, any other devices, and it's easy to set that device back up. And then it will show the proper display. But we have we have thoroughly pissed these plants off. Um, this one is still this is sh this is running an older uh, version of the script, so the LED actually will show uh, an error code, uh, whereas this one just turns red. But this plant is now at zero efficiency. It is it is not going to grow, and. E uh, it might recover a little bit if we close these panels, but it probably won't. So this is like a devastating thing to do. And you also saw that uh, the more pressure you have, the more ideal the pressure is, the uh, better the plant will do. And 
Yeah, it's going to take a long time for the pressure to come back up. Let's just uh, help this out ourselves by taking over. Okay. Ah, oh, the plants recovered really nicely. Uh, probably because it wasn't in that uh, that gunky air for very long, in that vacuum for very long. So the script is recovered. It's gone back to giving the the plant um, uh, water. So let's get rid of this gas sensor. Now, neither of these can sense gas, but they're still functioning. And what we will do is we will abuse the plant a little bit by starving it of water. Now, um, water starvation is a lot harder because you need a lot less of it. It's, it's really dense. Water is dense, so... And there you go. Uh, error code 503. Uh, this one's not erroring as badly because... Huh? That should be down, but it's not... Oh, 503. Again, this is an old version of the code, so... It still works the same way, though. So, that uh, that's telling you that the plant is not happy again. And you can respond to... Uh, uh, to its needs in some fashion. It's very basic. Um, there's a lot of things that can be added, like um, maintaining some kind of ratio between how much dark and how much light uh, the plant has received, um, and attempting to optimize that automatically, which, again, wouldn't be very good for um, potato plants, but would be very good for plants that you don't harvest, like ferns. Ferns, it would be ext extremely good to figure out exactly what, it, what a particular fern plant needs and optimize um, to the maximal. Other plants would probably be the, the, the winter spawn and, and other, other things like that that you don't pick. You just want it to be as happy as possible. Um, tomato plants uh, as well, but like, who cares? Uh, the, the tomato plant, just as long as it's like around 100%, who the hell cares? Um, if it is balanced, if you balance it out as um, as efficiently as possible, theoretically that efficiency should just keep going up until it reaches um, a limit where you're, you're not gaining more efficiency very quickly. But I don't know where that upper limit is. It's probably two five five, because I think all of the all of those integers are um, limited to 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 that number. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, there's nothing really else to show. Um, they are uh, they're pretty autonomous now. Um, there's no Harvey support. But I mean, um, Harvey wouldn't be very difficult to integrate, and we still got one more slot to stick a Harvey on there. I rather pick plants myself uh, than have a Harvey on there. But I mean, it's not difficult to make uh, a whole pile of these chips and a whole pile of these um, these hydroponic things, and you don't need LEDs on each and every one of them. But you can just walk up and you can see what the what the state is by looking at the the error code number and you could have 50 or 100 or a thousand of them however many you want to put in and they're super easy to code you could have um, um, a computer like sitting alone somewhere and just go click click export click click export click click export on one of my last tests I actually did that I actually had like uh, 50 um, hydro stations and a few others, but I blew it up because the it, the um, the results were very skewed. Uh, now, at the end of the video, um, is a sped up footage of these two plants. This one growing, these ones growing from seedlings to adults, and this one being harvested four or five times. It'll just give you a, a good sense of what you can expect from uh, the script and how it responds to these two different plants. But again, I've only tested it and optimized the script for these two plants, and they're not optimized for either of them. I've um, 
the amount of dark and the amount of light that's being given to them is sort of in the middle of the t of the two. Now you can, if you want, just set your sun lamps, your grow lamps, to be um, uh, to match the sun, uh, how uh, how uh, how much the star is out. But I mean, then you might as well just have it showered with natural light. Uh, if you notice, these things are blinded back here, so they don't have natural light. With potatoes, that's not much of a problem. They can be in natural light. Um, your efficiency will be between 80 and 90 percent. Um, you can play with these, uh, this value here, which is how long it spends uh, in the dark before it switches the light back on, and that is double the number of seconds. So if you want it to be off for 60 seconds, it's got to be 120 ticks. If you want it to be off for uh, 120 seconds, two minutes, then it has to be 240 ticks. This is the standoff and for turning the light on. And that is because when you turn the light on, they flicker. They don't come right on. So that is important. You can try to shave that down a little, but I wouldn't do it too much. Because if it's too low, the light will never come on. It'll just flash a few times, turn off. Um, if you're finding that the light isn't staying on, you might want to raise that value up a bit. And it uh, it could give you a little bit better results. I'm not sure why it wouldn't come on as quickly. Uh, perhaps your computer is like super fast and the ticks are going by too quickly. It might be that you have three ticks per second or four ticks per second, but I'm pretty sure the number of ticks per second is locked in this game. And if it's ticking too much, uh, turn down your cheat engine or your aimbot or whatever you're using because those things can interfere with um, those kind of, of, uh, uh, of um, things, those locked things. I am at a loss for words, which is normal because... My brain thinks too fast from my mouth. All right, so here's the footage. See ya.